Just a 90-minute flight from New Zealand is Norfolk Island, a tiny piece of land protruding above the South Pacific Ocean. And despite its size, Norfolk is packed full of scenery and history. Much of it lies at the Kingston World Heritage Site, where you can find a golf course neighbouring the famed Convict Compound. This area is the centrepiece to much of Norfolk's colourful past. Amazing history on this island. 1788, when the first fleet arrives in Sydney, there's a group of 23 that arrive on Norfolk Island from Australia. That penal settlement lasts until about 1814. 1825, the island opens up again as a penal settlement. That's where our notorious history comes from, and it's an appalling place, and that runs through to 1855. We then have this amazing two-week period of time where we have some of the convicts and the overseers who actually hand over the keys to the island, to the next arrivals, who are the descendants of the bounty mutineers and the Tahitian women that have been living on Pitcairn Island. And they are the people who are still here today. With such an intriguing past, it's no surprise then that historians are investigating whether Norfolk Island Golf Course may well be the oldest in Australia. The golf course has been here for quite a while. We're actually uh, currently de trying to determine just how old it is, but it's certainly been here since at least around 1913. Uh, the building itself here, which is the clubhouse and pro shop area, was actually the magistrate's residence back in convict times, and that was built in 1839. Norfolk Island Golf Club is part Pacific Resort course and part Scottish Lynx. But as you'd expect, it features plenty of the island's Norfolk Pine. Visually, it's one of the most spectacular courses you'll get. You've got the beautiful green fairways and, and greens and you've got the ocean outlook. Uh, you're teeing off from some unique places. To look at it, it looks like it's an easy course, but the trees are a big hazard. The balls can get stuck up in the trees. The fronds are shaped like baseball mitts, so you hit a ball up in the tree and basically you can kiss it goodbye. The course utilises this dramatic piece of land to the best of its ability. We've got nine greens with nine holes, but we have different teeing off positions for the second nine. So it's mainly on our par threes, the fourth and the ninth, that become the 13th and the 18th that really change the holes. So in particular on the fourth up on the coastal hole, that seriously changes. And that's where we begin our tour. So here we are at our fourth hole, uh, Norfolk Island Golf Club which is our 13th hole off the back tees, which is a 145 metre par three. Uh, obviously a very dramatic hole, and uh, one where the breeze and the coastline has a big part in, in how you play it. Very small target uh, up on the green that we're aiming for up there. And today we've got a southerly breeze. It's usually more, has more easterly into it. Missing on the left's not too bad, but right's no good because it's all out of bounds down the right. So uh, the idea, we're going to try and fight the breeze and, uh, and work one left to right into the hole. Yeah, not too bad. Just uh, got on the left-hand side of the green, so I'm very happy with a six iron with this wind today. Uh, so we'll see if we can give ourselves a chance for a birdie. OK, here we are up on the green now. Uh, left myself about a uh, 15, 20 footer for birdie, so always happy to hit the green here no matter what. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we can give it a bit of a roll for the two. Oh, nearly, not quite. But always happy to make a three on one of the trickier holes out here at Norfolk Golf Club. So uh, yeah, always happy with the three there. The fifth's a uh, par five, it's got a as good a tee as just about you'll ever see. It's right right in the corner of the island. And um, yeah, so there's a tee that almost feels like you're out in the ocean when you're teeing off there. But probably the big feature of the hole is that there's two large mounds that come in around about 260 metres off the tee. It makes you think a little bit off the tee what, what club you need to hit. Say for B and C graders, it's going to come into play for your second shot. On the right-hand side of the hole is the historic cemetery there, so there's another sort of feature that catches your eye as you're playing the hole there as well. The 9th and 18th holes are par 3. It hasn't got any bunkers on the hole, it's very open. There's a small amount of trees uh, just on the right-hand side of the green, but it plays exceptionally long for the distance it is because it's all carry, again, due to the strong Kaikuyu grass around. So while there's no bunkers, it's a very fair golf hole, and definitely one of the features about it is you're playing back and looking into the clubhouse and the hills behind the golf course here, so it's a, it's a good finishing hole. It may be a small course on a small island, but Norfolk Island is a club packed with character. 
It's the busiest sporting club on the island. While it's not the world's busiest golf club, it's, it's still very active. We've got around about sort of 90 to 100 active members on the island. Yesterday was our first uh, penance game that we had on Norfolk Island. Norfolk's only eight by five kilometres, so it's a bit hard to get regions. So all we did was got the map of Norfolk, folded in quarters, and wherever you lived, that's who you played for. Like Captain Cook himself, many of the residents are won over by the island's charms. If you want to step back in time and slow down and just have a great time and a great laugh, Norfolk Island's the place to come and play. It's a great place to get a group together and come and create your own fun. There's all sorts of other sports you can do. There's a great gun club here as well. There's a great tennis club as well. As far as fishing goes, it doesn't get much better than this anywhere. It's fantastic out there. If I go elsewhere, I won't go fish because I'm spoiled here with the fishing. Norfolk Island is certainly one of the world's more unique golfing destinations. A must for anyone who enjoys the outdoors, even if it's simply taking a guided walk through the tropical forests. There's also plenty of Pacific produce to sample. As you'd expect on a remote island, all of the fare comes fresh from the soil onto the tables of a surprising number of restaurants and cafes. And there are no shortage of hotels and resorts to stay at either. Governor's Lodge is ideally situated on the island. It's only a very short drive from here, approximately three minutes, four minutes to the golf course. Our golfing guests will be totally surprised at the range of activities outside of golf on the island. And they go from the soft adventure type things like riding bikes and horse riding, and fishing, you know, cliff top barbecues, um, picnics at the beach, and it's all totally within a pristine environment. As far as golfing getaways go, teeing it up on Norfolk Island is a one of a kind experience. We don't take bookings here, so basically if you come down, you can pretty much walk on the golf course. But the biggest thing we do more than anything is an unlimited seven day green fees. Uh, so $70 covers you uh, unlimited golf for seven days. You won't find that in too many other places. It's easy to see why Captain Cook fell in love with Norfolk Island. He described Norfolk Island as being a paradise, and that's coming from a man who had visited every other South Pacific island. He discovered the lot. Norfolk Island is the one that he describes as paradise. So it's a beautiful space, beautiful walks, beautiful games of golf, beautiful swimming. There's so much to do. In fact, probably one of the commonest things that I hear from visitors today is, I wish I'd known because I would have actually booked for two weeks instead of one.